But I prepared this address to explain to you exactly the reason that, uh, the real reason why, the, whether Trump gets impeached, whether he gets removed from office by the United States Senate, is really immaterial because the fundamental problem is that the Constitution gives the United States Senate far too much power that's undemocratic. And as a result, it doesn't actually represent the American people. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 unless California gets a lot more power in that system, so the system is radically reformed, reformed in a way which I simply don't believe to be possible politically. And if it is possible, it's only possible by literally threatening that, okay, we're going out the door unless you change. Huh. So I begin by saying, first of all, I cannot condemn traitor Trump, Moscow Mitch, and the entire Trump-McConnell gang in terms strong enough to match their crimes. In three short years, they have fashioned the Republican Party into an infernal engine of the greatest international criminal organization since the destruction of the German Nationalist Socialist Party in 1945. Even now, as the defenders of law and order descend upon them, the trump McConnell gang is threatening the American people with the specter of civil war. If there is to be a second civil war in the United States, let it be prosecuted with such vigor and to such extent that the scourge of white supremacy is wrung out of the American population forever. As for the liberation of California, our love of law and liberty will give us the confidence of all freedom-loving peoples against which no force can prevail. However, no matter how evil the McConnell Trump gang are, they are mere thieves and robbers who exploited the fundamental historic flaws and weaknesses in the U.S. Constitution. It is now clear that until those failings are repaired, California cannot remain in the United States. I do not indict the Constitution lightly. As a lawyer for nearly 30 years, I have thrice affirmed an oath to, quote, support the Constitution of the United States. However, I am also under a continual obligation to analyze and explain the law candidly and truthfully, and that includes the U.S. Constitution. Much has already been said about the Electoral College. Now, Trump. The Republicans and foreign adversaries exploited it in 2016 and will likely exploit it again in 2020. However, the assignment of power of the United States Senate is a much greater threat to democracy in the United States. This power must either be reformed or abolished without delay. Any means available must be used to reform the power of the U.S. Senate, including the threat of California resuming its independence from the United States. The U.S. Senate threatens democracy in two ways. First, power in the U.S. Senate is undemocratically assigned by states, not population. And the differences in population between the states of the United States has grown to such an extent that it is both unjust and absurd. Second, the undemocratic institution of the U.S. Senate holds too much power under the U.S. Constitution. The Senate just to remind you, can block the adoption of any budget or law, prevent the living of any tax. It, and it alone, determines what federal judges preside over federal courts, what treaties are ratified, what ambassadors represent us, and even what officials are responsible for the executive branch of the government, as well as their potential removal. The undemocratic nature of the U.S. Senate is as manifest as the U.S. Census. In 1790, the first census of the U.S. Constitution, the state with the smallest population was Rhode Island, with 68,825 people, including 948 slaves. Versus Virginia, with 787,610 people, of whom 292,627 served in bondage. In other words, the most populous state in 1790 had only 11 times more people than the least populated state. And when slaves were excluded, Virginia had just seven times more people than Rhode Island. By comparison, California, the most populous state, has approximately 39,865,590 people today, or 69 times more people than the least populous state, Wyoming, which has just 577 
1,737 residents. And yet both states have an equal voice in the U.S. Senate. The unfair division of power of the Senate is so extreme that if California were broken into 53 states, not three, 53, each represented by two members of what now would be a 204-member U.S. Senate. <laughs> Many of these new California states would have more members in Congress than Wyoming hmm. and six other existing states. Hmm. Put another way, Los Angeles County alone, which we're standing in, has more people than 41 states, including North Carolina, Michigan, and New Jersey. The grounds for our grievances are manifest and undeniable. Another consequence of the bias in the U.S. Constitution for small population states is how it rewards states that choose failing economic and social policies that cause people to flee, and while punishing states that choose successful ones that attract new residents by the millions. For example, West Virginia, where Donald Trump is popular, I think he's got a net 20% uh, approval rating right now up in West Virginia lost nearly 3% of its population between 2010 and 2018. And the current un unemployment rate is 4.6%. Plus, they have an incredible opioid problem. Mm -hmm. By comparison, the population of Massachusetts, where twice as many residents dislike Trump and support him, he's like net 32 minus in Massachusetts, increased nearly 1% during the same period, and the current unemployment rate is less than 3%. So states, in other words, states with declining populations are inevitably more conservative than the average states because older people and white residents are the least likely to leave a state, while younger people and minorities are the first to seek brighter opportunities when a state declines. This is why the Republican Party has profited even while its strongest bases of support have shriveled. Some historians and wannabe historians will assert that the flaws in the U.S. Constitution are really the result of compromises that were made in 1787 to persuade states with small populations to accept the U.S. Constitution. However, as I have explained, the effect of those compromises is much smaller, uh, that it was much smaller 200 years ago than it is today. In addition, let's not forget that the U.S. Constitution was written with clauses specifically designed to prevent the U.S. from abolishing slavery. And for the next 70 years, the slave states used that power to grant, by, granted by the U.S. Constitution to prevent slavery upon from abolishing slavery. Even the admission of California as a free state in 1850 came at the price of a federal bailout of the Texas slave state. Yep to the tune of $10 million from federal money, which, if you didn't know, would be equivalent more than $300 million today. That was the price that the slave states rung out to get California in the Union. Since the U.S. Constitution was written to be the slave owner's charter, and now gives white supremacists aid and comfort, reverence for the document should be checked by realism. Because the U.S. Constitution is flawed, especially the amount of power it gives the U.S. Senate. And these fatal flaws will remain whether Trump and Pence are removed by the U.S. Senate and even if they are sentenced to prison. As a result, the likely impeachment of Trump is an immaterial distraction that will not lessen support for California liberation among Californians. And if Trump is not removed by the U.S. Senate, that will only serve to make the need for California liberation more urgent and undeniable. Thank you.